Hello, everybody. Welcome to SBC Table Talk. I'm your host, Shaquille Jefferson, and I'm joined today by Abby Colvin. How are you doing today, Abby? I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, <laughs> I'm happy to have you here with me Thank to guest host today. Me. To kick things off, we're going to start off with our artist spotlight. For our artist spotlight this episode, we decided to shine a light on some of the murals here in Shreveport, Bossier. If you haven't noticed, our city is filled with amazing artwork all throughout Shreveport Bossier. Some are just abstract works of art and others are artistic expressions from the artists used to amplify their voices and show a powerful message with their piece. One of my favorites would have to be the mural that is located on side of the AT&T building downtown. It's called Once in a Millennial Moon. Shaquille, do you know this mural? Yes, I've seen it a couple of times. It's by the old bus station, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. And it is actually a national recognized mural. The mural is the largest publicly funded mural in the nation and a true community project. It was produced by a team of professional artists and 2,600 community painters under the guidance of muralist Meg Seligman, a nationally and internationally recognized mural artist. The 19 people depicted in the mural are from the three months to 80 years of age. The models were selected randomly from a cast of thousands and reflect diversity and ethnicity, religion, gender, age, and neighborhood. Also, the mural was painted not only by Meg herself, but a lot of local organizations such as school clubs and other organizations hosted by paint parties around the city. The mural depicts 40 different objects throughout the 30,000 square feet, and each one of them mean a different thing. Each one is a heirloom that has the meaning to family or person in the shreveport Bossier community. I've passed by that mural a thousand times. I've always wondered who the artist was, so that's very interesting mm -hmm. to finally figure that out. One of my favorite murals is in Shreveport. It's on Texas Ave. It's painted by the artist Will James. The reason it's my favorite mural is because it is, it's a mural of someone who I deem an icon, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Mm -hmm. The mural is my favorite not only because I personally know the artist, but it's a favorite because it's something that is memorialized of someone that is very important to me and has been very important in my life. Mm -hmm. The mural took more than 30 hours to complete. The majority of the mural is painted in black and white paint, creating a stark contrast that helps highlight the piercing blue eyes. But fun fact about the painting is inside each of the eyes is nine flecks of white. This is James' way of paying homage to Ginsburg, famously answered, the question, when will there be enough women on the U.S. Supreme Court when there are nine Ginsburg answered? So coming up here, we have a fun and easy experiment you can do at home with your kids. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm your host, Abby Colvin, and today I wanted to try a fun experiment you can do at home. The materials you will need for this experiment is a test tube. You can just use a water bottle, vinegar, small balloons, a funnel, and a teaspoon of baking soda. One of the most famous science experiments is the bubbly reaction that occurs after mixing vinegar and baking soda. This experiment is incre incredibly simple and helps kids learn about chemical reactions and their products. Using a funnel, pour baking soda into a balloon, then you pour the vinegar into a separate bottle and carefully fit the balloon over the mouth of the bottle. If the seal isn't tight, the experiment will fail. As the vinegar and baking soda react, carbon dioxide will fill the balloon, inflating it into a great size. Okay, now we're going to do the experiment. I have my balloons here and my water bottle. Um, I have my balloon attached to the funnel, and then I'm going to pour baking soda into the balloon. Okay. Then we're just going to make sure that it's in our balloon. That should be good. And then we're gonna get vinegar. You can also use apple cider vinegar. It works the same. I tested both. And I don't really have an exact measurement, but you don't wanna put too much vinegar in it. Just a little bit more. And then you want to tightly get your balloon and put it over. And if it's not tight, it will not work. And then you just pour your baking soda in. And watch it inflate. Oh, 
What's happening here is the vinegar and acid is creating a chemical reaction with the baking soda. When the two substances mix, you get carbonic acid, which is unstable and falls apart to become carbon dioxide and water. Since the carbon dioxide is much less dense than the stuff you use to create it, it wants to expand, and the balloon is stretching enough to allow it to do that. So that's all for today. If you have these ingredients at home, for sure give it a try. This is a fun experiment to do with your little kids, and I will see you next time. I like to give people memories. I like to give them something that they can look back on and it sparks some memory that makes them really happy or sad. I'm the instructor here at Bipsy. I teach photography and that includes fun art photography, wedding and event photography, portrait. I also teach Photoshop. Photography can develop new skill sets and create opportunity. After retiring in 20, 2012 from the United States Air Force, uh, I decided to find another passion, um, and that was with photography. Not every photo shoot has the same needs. That's why Bipsy provides instruction in a variety of courses, including portrait, event photography, and fine art photography. As a student, you can learn all aspects of photography, operating the camera, how to pose your model, developing the right light for a shot, and how to use software such as Adobe Photoshop to polish your work. It's so neat to be with the students through the process from day one when they're first learning how to turn on their camera, and then when they leave and they feel confident as they get jobs and see their work appear in galleries and on billboards. We want our students to have access to great opportunities, and we're the first college in the state to have a phase one camera. Most importantly, we want them to get their degree and make a living. So setting it all up and getting the ingredients out took about five minutes, but the actual experiment uh, reacted very quickly, maybe about 12 seconds. Okay. Is there anything you can substitute for the experiment? Actually, I was running low on vinegar when I was doing this at my house, and I had apple cider vinegar, and I wanted to see if that would work, and it actually did work, and it uh, blew up the balloon a lot quicker and bigger than normal. Okay, so if you use apple cider yeah, vinegar, you, you get both. the same yeah, results. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's, that's cool. Uh, well, what is the science behind the experiment? Like, what makes the balloon inflate? So essentially, it's just baking soda and vinegar making a chemical reaction that is a substitute for helium. It won't actually make the balloon, like, float, but it will self-inflate it. Okay. Uh, when you inflate the balloon, is it the same as someone inflating it with helium or someone blowing it up themselves? So while baking soda is a good replacement, uh, it is not the same as helium. Helium allows the balloon to float while the baking soda just itself inflates the balloon. These balloons cannot float because none of the fillings are lighter than air. Well, as you guys know, the holidays are right around the corner, so I thought you and I could share with each other a special family tradition that each of our families do during the holidays. Okay. So, um, every year my mom gets a big group uh, text with all my family members and we typically do it at my house and everyone in the group chats, uh, sends what they're going to bring, what they're going to make and then we're also pretty basic when it's actually Thanksgiving and we're all eating. We go around the table and say what we're thankful for. Oh, well that's cool. Um, that's a lot. Well, as a child, um, the day after Thanksgiving is when we would put up the Christmas tree and yeah. the lights and everything in mm -hmm. my house, and that was always fun until yeah, like it's a family tradition. Yeah, and um, as an adult, a tradition that I do every year is I go over to my godmother's house, and the day before Thanksgiving, or like two days before, mm -hmm. and we bake all the pies and cakes and everything together. that were yeah together that, that were taken to the uh, dinner. So. That's become a tradition in my adulthood. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, yeah, that's cool. I'm hoping I get more traditions throughout my life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, with the holidays approaching so fast, figuring out what you will bring to the party this year can be tough. Well, we have you covered. We have a video from Brandy Bibby to show us how to make a quick and simple sweet treat that would definitely be the life of the party. Hi, I'm Brandy Bibby, and today I'm going to show you how to make candy. Let's say that you get invited to a party, and Thanksgiving's coming up, so it might happen. And you just got off work, and you're like, oh no, i got to make something. So we're going to make candy, because it's super easy, super fast, and everybody loves candy. 
So you're gonna take your mold and you can use any kind of mold you want. It can be, you know, different shapes. I like this one because it has really cute lines and details in it, which makes it look really good. So then you're gonna wanna take your chocolate. And I like white chocolate, it's my favorite. You can use dark chocolate, milk chocolate, anything you want. You wanna make sure that it's the melting chocolate because if it's not, it may not melt as good and sometimes it's harder to make it smooth. So just take your wafers and we're just gonna put a few in there at a time. You probably wanna do three to four. It really just depends on the size of your mold. And you can also add other things to it. Um, you can do almonds, you can do peppermints, you can do cranberries, pecans, you know, anything you want because it's candy. You can even add, you know, M&Ms, Reese's, whatever you like. So we're just gonna get a few in there. So then you're just wanna gonna take it and you're gonna put it in the microwave. Now you're gonna wanna microwave it for about a minute first time. Okay, so now that you're on, that it's done, we're gonna take it out. You're just gonna slowly tap it. And then we're just gonna keep putting it in there until we get it smooth the way that you like it. But let's start at 30 seconds after that because you don't want it to burn or get clumpy. So you just want to go slow and make sure you take your time with it. Okay, now we're going to take it out again. And you're just going to keep doing it. Now I can already see that I'm going to need more chocolate to add to it. So you just add some more to it, however much you think you need. We're just gonna keep melting it until we get it smooth. And now that it's pre-melted, we're just gonna let it cool for until it hardens and it's easy to come out. So we've let our candy cool. And so now we're just gonna pop it out and put it on our cute little festive tray for Thanksgiving. So a tip is to just kind of pull it a little bit to stretch it just a little bit and that'll help pop them out. And so then we're just gonna take it and we're just gonna pop them out and just push them a little bit sure you don't do it too much so they don't break. And there you are. You have really cute candy that is great for any holiday and for Thanksgiving it's quick and easy as a side dish or a treat. Um, you can add anything you want to it. Like I said, almonds, cranberries, just make it festive, have fun with it, um, and just have a good time. I'm Brainy. Thank you for joining us. So Shaquille, what would you say your favorite Thanksgiving dish is? Hmm, uh, I love food, period, so, but out of everything would have to be my mom's gumbo. It's just, oh, she makes gumbo. Uh, every it year so is good. so amazing. Yeah. I look forward to it, because it's the only time she makes, makes it, it is on Thanksgiving. It's on Thanksgiving. Yeah, so I look forward everybody. to it every year. Ooh, that sounds so good. What, what about you? Know? What's your favorite dish? I'm so basic. I like pumpkin pie. Like, that's uh, my favorite, is when we get to dessert and I get to eat me a piece of pumpkin pie with whipped cream. I've actually never had pumpkin really? pie it's before. Really? so good. Really? I don't know. I feel like it's not for everybody you kind of have to have that taste for pumpkin but i love pumpkin pie well that's all we have for today on what's happening sbc i'm your host shaquille jefferson 
And I'm Abby. Thank you so much for having me here today to guest host with you. And we will see you next time on What's Happening SBC.